Hi, it's Gary Chimes from Lake Washington Sports and Spine. And what I want to go over today is a way to think about classifying the different types of imaging that we use with musculoskeletal injuries. So when we're seeing people with injuries, whether it's a spine issue or a shoulder issue or a knee issue or a hip issue, we have a bunch of different imaging tools that we use. These include x-rays, CT scans, ultrasound, MRIs, and a couple special variations of these. And I think there's a lot of times this can be really confusing as a consumer to know which of these tools is the right choice for you. Now, to be honest, a lot of the problems, the insurance companies don't always play fair with us in terms of using these imaging techniques. They often play games about saying things aren't medically necessary. And that's often true in the strictest sense, like if you have a knee injury, it's not gonna kill you, but it might make a big difference in your functional capacity. So sometimes you're ordering imaging tests, not because it's the right choice, but because the insurance company is forcing you to go through a hoop to get the test that's appropriate for you. Um, but on the other hand, sometimes people are so conditioned on that that they assume that an MRI is always the best choice, and it's not always the best choice. There's sometimes other types of images we'll look at. So the differences between the imaging is basically what is taking a picture. Is it radiation, is it sound waves, or is it magnets? In the group of images that are taken from using radiation, there's gonna be x-rays and CT scan. So x-rays are the classic plain film x-ray, and x-rays actually have some really good advantages to them. One of the things that's wonderful about an x-ray is it has a tremendous amount of resolution, which is the crispness of an image. Resolution is technically defined as how close to two things be to one another and still be able to tell that they're different, and x-rays have fantastic resolution. The other thing that's really nice about x-rays is that you can actually load different tissues in different positions. So for example, if I'm looking at somebody's knee, I might look at a standing view and then also a view when they're lying down, and I can see differences between the way the joint looks depending on their position. So those are some great things about x-rays. The main limitations of x-rays is it basically sees calcium and metal really well, and sometimes has a really hard time seeing other things, especially soft tissue injuries. A CT scan is another radiation image where it takes a sequence of cuts and basically looks at cross-sectional anatomy. And it's really the, the tool of choice when you want to look at bony anatomy in a lot of detail. Uh, it's again, not always the best choice for soft tissue. And an imaging modality that I think is actually underutilized a lot is something called a SPECT CT. And what's really nice about a SPECT CT is it takes a regular CT scan, and then on top of that, it superimposes uh, evidence of biologic activity. It's a really wonderful tool when you're trying to look for things like occult infections, where you're concerned about spread of cancer, but we use it a lot in our clinic to look at the joints, the small joints in the neck and the back called the facet joints. And it can be a wonderful tool for assessing facet joints. So that's radiation. The next class of imaging is ultrasound. Ultrasound is something that we do in our office. It is a wonderful tool. It has way better resolution than an MRI, for example, probably about five to 10 times higher. It's something where you can actually touch the patient so you can go right over the area that might be the most sensitive is a wonderful dynamic tool, so you can use it for motion. So ultrasound is one of my favorite tools to use. Uh, some of the limitations on ultrasound is it doesn't penetrate bone. So for example, if you're trying to look at something like an ACL tear that's deep inside the joint, you can sometimes see it if you catch it at the right angle, but it's easy to miss those deeper structures. Ultrasound is also not great at looking at curved structures that are at depth. So for example, the hamstring tendon in the butt can often be hard to see cleanly and often MRI is better looking at those types of tears than ultrasound would be. Another thing that's really wonderful about ultrasound is you can also use it for guided procedures. One of my favorite diagnostic tools that I also think is underutilized is what I call a proof of concept injection. So if I see a structure that I think might be a pain source, I can numb that area using ultrasound guidance. And if the symptoms go away, then it can be pretty, uh, yeah, pretty good piece of evidence that that may be in fact where the symptoms are coming from. So that's gonna be the class of imaging that's done by sound waves. The final class of imaging is gonna be using magnets to create images, and that's gonna be an MRI. So an MRI, um, I think a lot of people think of it as the best tool, and if you know nothing else, it is probably the overall best tool. It's sort of like the um, all-purpose flower of imaging. It does everything pretty well. Uh, one of the important things to recognize, though, is that MRI actually has the worst resolution of all these different imaging techniques that we look at. So the images are way less crisp than an X-ray or a CT scan or an, or an ultrasound is. What's really good about MRI, though, is it's very good at tissue penetration. So the quality of the image does not deteriorate the deeper you go. It can penetrate bone. It can see things inside of bone, like bone signal, bone bruising. Uh, so it's wonderful from that standpoint. 
is terrific at tissue differ differentiation, meaning distinguishing different tissue types, especially if you see something and you're not sure if you're looking at something that's supposed to be there or not supposed to be there. But the main limitation of, ultra, of MRI is that it is, uh, it's not this level of detail, the resolution is actually not great. It's also not cheap and it can uh, be uncomfortable to sit in a tube for 40 minutes. So those are also some other downsides and it's, it's you know, it's going to be expensive. Now there's a special type of MRI called an MR arthrogram. And an MR arthrogram is going to be something you need to do if the natural position of the body's tissue prevents you from getting a clear picture. So an example of where that might come up is if we're looking at somebody's shoulder. So this is the shoulder blade or scapula, and this is the humeral head. There's a structure that's deep in between that they're called the labrum. The labrum is going to be a fibrocartilage, like your earlobe. And because the two bones are right on top of each other, if you just look at a regular MRI, the two bones basically can compress a tear. So unless you put fluid into the joint, it's going to be hard for you to really get a clear picture. So the main area is where we need to use an MR arthrogram as opposed to just a regular MRI. The classic examples are going to be labral tears in the shoulder, labral tears in the hip, and a TFCC injury in the wrist. Those are probably the big three. There's a few other exceptions, but those are going to be the main categories. So big take home points I want people to remember that we take pictures by radiation, sound waves, or magnets. Each of these different tools have different strengths and weaknesses. And so one of the most important things is when you're working with a specialist like me is let me know what the problem is. Like, you know, I have shoulder pain or a hip pain, and then let me choose the tool that's appropriate to you. Um, sometimes I think patients come in, they're kind of like dead set that they have to get a certain type of imaging because they've done their own research and they think they know what's the best choice is. But there's always going to be these nuances that help us make sure that we're looking out for what the best picture is for you. So this is Gary Chimes, Lake Washington Sports and Spine.